Hi everyone, I'm Frank from the City of Games, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to play the Art of Cats with the Kittens and Beasts expansion. Now please keep in mind, I'm only going to go over the new rules, so if you're not familiar with how the Art of Cats plays, please check out the other how to play for the base game first, and then come back. Equally, if you're interested in the family version, there's another video for that. And finally, please keep in mind, all of the pieces you're going to see here for the expansion are prototype components, but the rules are final and will not change, so this will teach you everything you need to get started with the game. First things first, let's get to the table, and you'll see that we've set it up following all the normal rules for a two-player setup. We've got our boats, we've got the Oshaks, we've got common treasures, we've got the island, players have chosen their cat meeples and put them on the island randomly, Vesh's boat, we've got all of our supply and the cards, permanent baskets, we are good to go. We've even got a few fish just for the sake of this demo. Now, we're going to start with the kittens module. Keep in mind there is the kitten module, the beast module and the event module and each of them can be played independently or combined, meaning you can use one, two or three modules. I recommend the first time you play, you start with the kitten module, then you try the beast module, then perhaps you try the events module and then you try combining them together. Please keep in mind that the event module is a lot more complicated than the other two so you probably don't want to try this one first. So let's look at how the kitten module works. You're going to want to take the kitten board. One side has two boxes, the other side has a 2 slash 5 and a fish icon. This will also have the red cat icon on it as well, just like the island board does and the player boards to show that you're on the right side for the standard game. The other side is used for family. You're also going to want to take the kitten bag and this is just going to be put somewhere nearby just like you would with the discovery bag for the cats. So Let's get started and let's put down some cat tiles. In a two player game, we would put down two cats on each side of the island per player. And that means four over here and four over here. However, as well as cats, because we're playing with a killer module, we're gonna get some kittens taken randomly from the bag and we're gonna put them onto the kitten board. Number of kittens is always the same regardless of your player count. You're just gonna to want to randomly take four out of the bag, place them onto the island, and that's going to be it for you to get started. Let's just take a fourth one there. As I say, doesn't matter if you're playing one player or six, it will always be four kitten tiles. So we're good to go. Let's skip ahead a little bit. We've done our fishing, we've done our card drafting, our players have some cards, and now we're moving into cat rescue because this is where the kitten module starts to take place. Each player in turn order is going to reveal the cards they want to play. Our red player is going to go first and they're revealing a basket and one boot. Our purple player is going to go second, they're revealing one basket, two half baskets, and four boots, meaning they are now going to be the fastest player, and just like normal, they would move to the top of the track, and they would get to go first. Each day, the fastest player has access to rescuing kittens. Only the fastest player has access to rescuing kittens. So our purple player as fastest now has the option to rescue kittens as well as cats. Our red player can only rescue cats as would any other player playing the game. So let's play through and show you how that works. I can choose to rescue cats just like normal and the kittens are a bonus that I could choose to rescue should I wish. They follow all the normal rules that they require fish and a basket and I can only play one basket card per turn but as many as I like within the round. So let's say that we're going to play our two half baskets and we're just going to rescue this cat over here and we're going to pay three fish for the honour of doing so and we're going to put this onto our boat like such. Following all the normal rules, we chose not to rescue kittens, so that's okay. We come to our red player, they don't have the ability to rescue kittens, so they're going to use their basket, they're going to spend some fish, they're going to take a cat, and they're going to place it on their boat too. Back to us. We've now decided that this green kitten here would work really nicely in this corner. So we're going to now rescue a kitten. We could have rescued it on the last turn if we wanted to, but we decided to take this piece first to stop other people doing so. When you rescue kittens, you will need a basket, you will need fish, you will need two fish to rescue one kitten. However, because kittens are small, you can rescue one 
or two kittens with one basket. We could pay five fish to take two, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this kitten here, and we're also gonna take this kitten here, and we're gonna pay five fish for the honor of doing so, and we're gonna spend this basket card. When you place kittens on your boat, they work just like cats. In fact, kittens, once they're on your boat, are cats. A green kitten is just a green cat. It will form a green cat family for any lesson cards or any other cards that count the number of cats you've got, the number of colored cats you've got. These will just count as colored cats and they're no longer classified as kittens because there are no cards that refer to kittens in the game. So let's say we place this kitten onto our boat following all the normal rules and we're going to place it here. You'll see I'm placing it over a green treasure map and as it is a green cat, I will get to take a common treasure. Now I'm taking two kittens, but because I've covered the treasure map, I have to place that first before I can place the other kitten. Of course, I could have placed this kitten first, but I chose not to. So let's take a common treasure and let's place that on our boat and let's place it here. Now this is placed, we can take our red kitten, and now we place the red kitten. This red kitten is being placed on top of another treasure map, so again I get to take another common treasure, treasure and I'll put that onto my boat, and now my turn is finished. Before we move on though, the kittens will now immediately get refilled. So in this instance we're going to take two new kittens from the bag, and we're going to add them to the island. So, for example, we've gotten a new orange and a new blue kitten. It comes over to the other player, they've got a permanent basket, they're going to flip it over to use it, they're going to spend some fish, they're going to take another cat, it's going to come back to us, we've got our permanent basket, so again, we could rescue cats or we could rescue kittens, it's up to us. We're gonna flip over our permanent basket and for the sake of this demo, I just wanna show that we can also just take one kitten. If we choose to take one kitten, it's just gonna cost us two fish and we'd place that onto our boat. Once it's been placed, again, we would refill the kittens and then we would continue. At the end of the day, just like you would normally expect, all of the cats get removed from the island, however the kittens get to stay, so you know what kittens are going to be available on the next day. And that's it for the kitten module, everything you need to know. As I say, for scoring purposes, these just count as cats, so if I was to have this here like this, this would be a family of three green cats. If I had a card that said get one fish for every green cat, I would gain three fish. If I had a card that said get one point for each green cat touching the edge of my boat, I would get two points and so on. If you've got any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. But now we're going to move on and we're going to reset and we're going to have a look at the beast module. To do this, we will remove the kitten stuff because again, you don't need to have it, but if you want to combine them, you are welcome to. The beast module is a little bit more complicated than the kitten module, but in principle, it's going to be just as easy and quick to set up. What we're going to do is we're going to reset the game. We're going to put some cats out into the side of the field, just like you normally would. We'll get rid of the kittens and then we can get started. However, the difference with the beast module is that whilst you normally would put two cats per player on either side of the island, on the first day, and only the first day, you put no cats on the right side of the island. Instead, you would get to put out some beasts instead, and you put out the same number of beasts as you would cats. So in this instance, as a two player game, we will put out two beasts per player on the right side of the island. As I say, just to reconfirm, this only happens on the first day. The second, third, fourth, and fifth days, this would just be cats like normal, but on the first day, two beasts per player on the right side, two cats per player on the left side. Now, these work exactly the same way as everything else does in regards to rescuing cats. To rescue a beast, you are going to play basket cards, and it is going to be one basket to rescue a beast, and it's going to cost you five fish. So for example, let's say that the purple player is going first, they are going to play their basket card, which allows them to rescue a cat or a beast, they're going to spend five fish, and they're going to take one of the beast tiles, and they're going to put it onto their boat. Now, 
This obviously happens during the rescue phase, and again, at the end of the day, these beasts will be gone. Players may have the opportunity to get multiple beasts, they may choose just to have one. But when you place a beast on your boat, it follows all of the normal tile placement rules. There's nothing special about them. You can rotate them, you can flip them, as long as they fit within the grid and they're not over the edge, then it's going to be valid. Again, you can put them on treasure maps and rats, they will cover rats, they will not give you treasures, but you can cover those spaces and it's entirely up to you. Finally, you'll notice that these tiles will have either four icons around the edge of them or three icons around the edge of them. So it's up to you whether you want to choose a three icon or a four icon beast tile, which beast tile is going to be right and where you're going to put it. What you want to do is you want to build friendships with beasts. Now these kind of work like cat families, but it basically means you're connecting a cat family to a beast and you need to match that family to the icon on the beast. So let's have a quick look. We're gonna place this on our boat and what we wanna do is we wanna try and find a way to get as many of these cat icons pointing towards the matching treasure maps. So this green cat here is gonna be closer to this green treasure map, this purple one to the purple one, this orange one to the orange one and this blue one, maybe we're gonna give up on or maybe we're not gonna aim for that treasure but that's more strategy rather than rule but that's what you want to kind of do when you place it is think about how can I rotate it how can I place it to try and get me that starting point because effectively you're going to build cat families out from these beast icons so let's say we've rescued our beast we've paid our fish our other player's gone it's back to us now we want to start putting cats around the beast just like normal any cat you take or any tile you place is going to have to be placed adjacent to a previous piece so for example we could put this one here because it is touching the beast however it is not touching the square that contains the green cat icon. For this cat and this beast to start forming a friendship, this cat would either have to touch this edge of this square or this edge of this square. Of course, it can touch multiple edges. That's absolutely fine. This would be valid. It's still touching that square. It's blocking off the blue one, but we've decided that's not important. So it's up to us where we want to put it. The important thing to keep in mind is each cat icon can only form one friendship so it doesn't matter if we've got one green cat touching this and another green cat touching this this would still classify as just one friendship a friendship will form when the cat that is touching the matching cat icon is part of a family. So at the moment, we've started to form a friendship, but we don't have a friendship. If we place this one here, we now have two cats that again is not a cat family as you need to have three cats, but we're forming that friendship. And finally, we're gonna take a third cat tile place it here and now we have a family and this is touching that icon which means we formed formed a friendship for convenience sake there are a number of beast meeples which you will want to set up when playing with the beast module and these can be used to represent friendships that have been formed they all have the same meaning the colors and shapes are just there for you to pick your favorites and to decorate your boat in the most pleasurable way possible but when you've completed a friendship simply take one of the figures you're going to want to put it across the gap between the cat and where the icon is to show that friendship has been formed and at this point this is now a complete friendship. You can continue adding more cats to this if you wish. So for example, let's say that we took an Oshax and we added this Oshax over here. Let's say that we chose to make this green. That is absolutely fine. We've now got a family of four and the friendship remains. It will never ever go away, but we can continue growing that family. Likewise, we may decide that we want to start building other cats off in another direction. And hopefully by the end of the game, we're going to have enough cats in to build up friendships for all of these because you're going to score five points at the end of the game for every form friendship so if this was the end of the game we would score five points because we've got one friendship if we for example had another purple cat over here and we had completed this family 
then at this point we would say this is now a form friendship we would also take another figure to put it here and at the end of the game we would score five points and five points and therefore 10 points meaning any beast that has four icons can score up to 20 points any beast that has three icons can score up to 15 points but you may score zero five or ten hopefully that helps you understand how the beast module works. If you've got any questions or comments about that, again, please feel free to ask below and I will get back to you. So let's kind of quickly reset this and then now we'll move on to the events module. Before we move on to the events module, I just want to say a few things about it. It is a little bit more complicated and there will be a number of reference sheets to help you understand all of the icons. It's certainly not designed for new players to try the first time they play, but it does offer and provide a lot of extra replayability and more strategic decisions to the game as you start to get comfortable with it. So we have reset and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add all of the components for the events module. This means we're going to take the five point tokens, the one point tokens, the semi-permanent tokens and the rat meeples. I've only got a few of these at the moment but this would be a big part of meeples for you to make sure that you've got enough when you're playing the game. So let's also take the event back. During the start of the game, so this is at the setup, before anything happens, before players get their fish, before you put any cards out, before you fill the fields, you are going to dive into this bag and you are going to take out five tokens and you're going to place them onto the island track. So let me just reach in there. I'm just going to quickly make sure that I've got five in my hand. One, two, three, four, five, and we are good to go. Now, you can remove Vesh's boat for the time being, and the first one of these that you take, you're gonna want to place onto this space here. You will notice in the top left-hand corner, some of them will have a little red crack with a gem in it, and some of them will not. If you have one with a red gem crack, then you're gonna want to put it there. So, sorry, for the first space, you're going to want to put one there that has the red gem crack. For the next three spaces, you're going to want to use the other sides that do not have the red gem crack. So you're going to go red gem crack, no, 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 and then the last space again will be red gem crack. Just to help you understand what some of these do, I'm going to just choose a few specific ones to make sure that you get a good understanding. You'll also notice that all of the ones that do not have the red gem crack will have either a green number or a blue number at the top. All of the ones that do have a red gem crack will not have a green or blue number at the top. So this could be an example of how it might be set up. And as I say, these will be random. First one red, the next three not, last one red. The red gem ones generally are things that change rules. The green and blue ones are points related and there can sometimes be rule changes and we'll get to that shortly. Now, at the start of each day, before you add cats to the player, you will resolve whichever event is related to your current round. So for example, we are gonna start here and this is gonna be a rule changing event that happens at the start of the first day. This one here says, have one less cat per player. So what that means is we're going to now set up the game and we're going to place one less cat per player. And this will always be in the left hand side. So in a two player game, we're actually only going to have three cats on this left hand side. And then we're going to have four cats over on the right hand side. Apologies, two cats on the left-hand side. So it's one less per player. This is a two-player game, so we're going to have two less cats. On the right-hand side, we're going to have four cats because, again, it's a two-player game, and we'd have the normal number of cats. This is only going to take effect for this first day, and once we set it up, we can put the boat on top to show that that's happened. We're now going to play through that first round, and all of the rules would be normal, but there's going to be slightly less cats here. Now, the next three are scoring and this means at the start of the day once everything's been reset but before the new cards come out the new fish come out and before the new cats come out we're going to score the first tile so in the second day we're going to move over here and this says two points for each cat in a column. So let's put a few cats onto our boat. We are going to see that our boat is made up of a grid with a number of rows and a number of columns. And we can choose any one column and count the number of cats in that column. So for example, 
if we did this, we could choose this column here and that would have two cats in it. If we were to take this cat and we could do this, for example, we could choose this column here and now it's got three cats in it or we could choose this column here that also has three cats in it. Obviously we could choose other columns with less cats in it, but we're gonna score less points. So when you're starting the game with this one as a scoring opportunity, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have at least one column on your boat that contains as many different cats as possible. They can be the same color, they can be different colors, but let's say that this is where we're at. We've got four cats, we get two points per cat in that column, which means that we're gonna get eight points. We would use the point tokens, put them in front of us, and we would then play the round. The cats would come out, we'd get our fish, we would draft our cards and play through. When we then move on to the third day, again, before things come out, we would score this one. And this one says three points per visible treasure map on your boat. You can see we've got one, two, three, four, five treasure maps that are visible. So we would gain 15 points. So this is going to encourage you not to cover those treasure maps in the first two rounds. When we get to the fourth day, at the start of the day, we would get two points for each common treasure on our boat, meaning we're going to desperately want to cover as many of those treasure maps as possible in the third day so that in the fourth day we score those points and now when we move to the fifth day you will see that this one says a rule changing event that each treasure map you cover will now give you two common treasures instead of one so perhaps actually we don't want to cover those treasure maps until the end so as a kind of reminder of how this works when you set up the events you're going to take out five at random the first one will be red gem side up the next three will be red gem side down and the last one will be red gem side up at the start of each day before you do anything in the round summary before you even put out the cats you will resolve that tile and do what it says some of them like the treasure map one will set a rule that applies to that entire day but it does not continue on after that day anything that's related to points will score all players points immediately at the point it is resolved before anything happens in that round all of these are described and explained in the back of the rule book to give you a quick reference of how they work but for the sake of this video let's just go over a couple more to give you an idea of some of the other things you might see you may see a rule changing event which is the semi -perm um, semi permanent token so this says one basket or four boots if this comes out at the start of this round players may choose to take either a boot or a basket token so each player at the same time will get to look or get to take one of these and they'll get to make a decision there and then do they want a basket do they want four boots? Whichever they decide, they will put next to their other permanent baskets. And you'll see that these are purple and they have numbers next to them. And these are a one-time use. So you will keep this until the end of the game unless you decide to play it. And you will play it at the same time you play your um, rescue cards. So let's say I put down my three green cards. I would then place this on top to show other players I'm doing this. And then at the time I flip these over, this would then contribute to what I have. If I'd played the boots, of course it would help me in turn order. If I play the basket, of course it gives me the option to rescue an extra cat or beast if I'm playing with that module and it's the first day. And once I've used it, it gets discarded. Remember, use does not mean I've used it to take something. It simply means I have played it. So that is how the semi-permanent tokens work. Finally, I'd like to look at the royal rats because these ones are a little bit more complicated. The royal rat symbol simply means all players get to take a royal rat and they place it on their boat immediately. To confirm, this is not optional. Everyone has to do it. And these follow all the normal tile placement rules. So, if this is where we're at, I would have to place this adjacent to one of the previous placed tiles. If it's the start of the game, then this will be the first piece that I place on my boat. And let's say I'm going to place it here. Now I've got a tile on my boat. From here on out, all other tiles are going to have to touch a previously placed tile. And in this instance, because it's that wrap, I'm going to have to build off that wrap or place them next to the other cats. Royal rats can go over treasure maps. They can go over rats. They can go anywhere you like. They follow all of those normal rules. At the end of the game, they are worth minus three points. And you would add this to your rat score. For lesson cards, they count as rats. And for any other card that refers to rats, a royal rat is just a rat. 
One of the main differences between a royal rat and a normal rat on your boat is that a royal rat does count as filling a square. So if I had this here and I had this here, this room would now be filled. And that means at the end of the game, I would not get the minus five for this room, but I would get the minus three for the rat. Another rule that you need to keep in mind with the royal rats is that any time if you have a cat touching a royal rat, you may spend one fish to eat the rat and remove it from your boat. You can do this at any time as long as it is before you move on to final scoring. So that's how the royal rats work. As I say, all of these tokens can be found in the rule book, so you can look up and see what they mean. But keep in mind, any green numbers with two dots means per. So this says two points per room that is filled. Any one that has a blue number without the dots is a one-off score. So this one would be five points if you have no treasures, and this would be five points if you've got nothing in the captain's rooms. Hopefully that helps you get an understanding of how the events work, but as I say, you will need to refer to the reference on the back of the rule book as you get them for the first time to discover what they mean. If you've got any comments or questions at all, feel free to ask them below. Otherwise, until next time, keep on adventuring.